It's that time of year again. Unlike many fortunate divers who live close to a dive site, on a boat, or on some island, the rest of us try to plan at least one dive trip per year. This time, we're heading down to the Bahamas. Depending on the budget, a trip usually includes booking a hotel or a dive resort room somewhere close to the dive locations, then a flight, maybe renting a car, and then booking a couple of dives. For many people, the Bahamas is the ideal vacation spot, from bright blue waters and soft white sand beaches to all-inclusive resorts and ice-cold piña coladas, it's easy to fall in love with this beautiful island chain. Here in Nassau, the Atlantis Resort is a famous fixture for tourism. But this is not where we're staying. This time, we're booking our week on a liveaboard, the Aquacat Catamaran. The 102-foot Aquacat has room for up to 30 guests, offering amenities for diving in the Exuma Keys, Bahamas. The weather is gorgeous. We all meet at the dock on Saturday. We gathered on the lower deck to unload, get to know each other, and get to know the crew members. We head to the upper deck for an orientation. The captain gives us an orientation of the vessel and introduces each crew member explaining how each one will be engaged in making our trip the best experience ever. Dinner is served. Special dietary menus such as vegetarian, vegan, and gluten-free can be accommodated with prior request. All the divers have set up their gear on the lower deck already. The next day, all we need to do is get dressed and jump in the water. When most guests head out to their cabins to start unloading their gear and get ready to rest, some of us need to start setting up our cameras and video gear. Built for a smooth ride, the Aquacat catamaran travels during the night to our first dive site. Our first stop is the Barracuda Shoals. The sun is rising, the weather is great, and the water is calm. Everyone on the vessel is asleep. The early birds are the chef and sous chef who start making breakfast for the guests. The gear is all set on the deck waiting for us to get in it and jump in the water but we need to get some food before the adventure begins. Right after breakfast, we attend an orientation and an introduction to the crew, who will do what and when. The crew uses great material to brief us about the different dive sites. They use boards and draw some representation for the different profiles, marine life we may encounter, 
where the mooring likely is, and more. We head down to the deck where we get ready to jump in the beautiful turquoise water. There are two gates on each side of the vessel. We get in the water using a giant stride for about six feet high entrances. The Barracuda Shoals is a great, easy dive in super clear water, perfect for beginning divers. This side is a relatively shallow reef at 40 feet. Despite the beauty of the dive sites in the Exumas, we are the only boat on every site we visit. It may be the reason why the reefs are pristine and alive with an abundance of groupers, sergeant majors, snappers, schools of barracuda, and a wide range of tropical fish. Even though the site is shallow, the majestic corals around here make this dive a treat for all types of divers. The site is so alive that we expect to find some fish or marine life around every coral formation. Some fish seem to be curious and come to check us out. As we come to the end of this first dive, a turtle comes to swim with the divers. On each side of the boat, there are ladders to exit the water. At each exit, a dive master holds a hose of warm, fresh water to rinse our face, hair, and gear before we walk back up to our seats. After exiting the water, we climb a few stairs to join our station. One great feature the crew has introduced is a board with divers' name tags. When we enter or exit the water, each of us moves to their name tag accordingly so the crew knows that a diver is still in the water or on the vessel. We have access to two showers on the deck. Great to rinse off and stay fresh after the dives. Once we finish the dives, we go sit and get off our BCDs. This is where the magic happens. On a liveaboard, we don't disassemble our gear. The highly efficient crew immediately plug in the hoses to fill our tanks while we go shower, have a quick snack, change batteries, and get ready for the next dive. The comfort and the energy saved allows us to make more than four dives a day when possible.
lower deck offers freshwater tanks for the cameras, charging stations, and cleaning towels to dry off our gear after we complete the dive. AquaCat has 11 large cabins, each with individually controlled AC, a private bathroom with shower, and oversized beds for extra comfort. Twin cabins have fold-down bunks that can be configured for up to four guests, making it perfect for a family or friends. There's a mini fridge in each cabin in case we want to keep some snacks that we bring down from the dining room. When we're underwater exploring these beautiful dive sites, the awesome indispensable house mouse Julie changes the sheets, replaces the towels, and cleans up our cabins so we don't have to worry about it during our trip. Imagine waking up every morning to such a view. Our next dive takes us to slightly deeper waters. A great deal of the diving in the Exumas is on walls, starting in as little as 40 feet of water and then dipping to more than 100 feet while surrounded by beautiful swim-throughs and underwater canyons. As we hang around the 15 feet bar for our safety stop, a school of Caribbean reef sharks, along with some barracudas and schools of jacks, roam around the boat. The experience of sharks swimming around us at a few of the dive sites made those dives more exciting. We complete a few dives on the first day and can't wait to explore the other dive sites. During this dive, we get the opportunity to explore a wall filled with beautiful varieties of fascinating black corals, orange elephant ear, and tube sponge. Some of us venture through the popular swim-throughs, entering at about 50 feet and exiting the caves at about 80 feet, where the wall plunges down to more than 100 feet. The Exuma Sound has more advanced, deeper dives where pelagic species and reef sharks roam. 
The entire experience is an exploration of little touched sights, just as nature intended. It feels as if there is a new surprise awaiting in every turn. The tidal flow onto and off of the bank creates strong currents between the islands, ideal for drift dives over a mile in length. The tides change direction every six hours and leave slack water, no current periods, to dive reefs in the channels between islands. Drift diving is one of the coolest diving one can experience around here. Captain waits for the right tide, then he positions the vessel accordingly for us to get ready. We get in our gear, do our safety checks on the deck, and wait for the countdown on the deck sound system. We wait for the yell, and off we jump, negatively buoyant to stay close to each other at the bottom. We don't need to swim, the current does it all. We are drifting towards the same destination. One fun thing I enjoy during drift diving is sharing some selfies with dive mates. They seem to enjoy it as well. One famous drift dive in the Bahamas is called the washing machine. The name gives it away. There's a strong circular tide there that can roll you head over heels as though you're in a washing machine. If you time it just right, the tidal current will sweep you down a boulder chute into the washing machine basin at 40 feet initially and then lift you right back up to 15 feet onto a sea ledge. The site has excellent visibility of approximately 100 feet.
after being tumbled through the washing machine, there are a few gems for us to see once we've slowed down. At the end of the washing machine, the current will drop you off on a lavish reef patch inhabited by schools of colorful tropical fish and small underwater jungles of soft and hard corals. Coral heads host a great variety of marine life. Many fish species share the protection of these coral heads where they take shelter from the rough current. And so do turtles. You can find them resting or feeding on sponges and grass behind those little walls.
After staying at 15 feet for a couple minutes, we surface and hang on to the rope handed to us by the Sea Dog boat crew while we wait for the Aqua Cat to pick us up. If you're not familiar with this process, this is another great experience that you won't forget. While we're holding on to the line waiting at the surface, the group starts to pretzel out. The tip of the rope is tucked to the fast approaching vessel as the vessel passes us, the rope starts to tighten up and instantly drags you toward the vessel. The crew was not kidding when they asked us to hold on tight to that line during the briefing. Aquacat itineraries explore the crystal clear waters of the Bahamas with a choice of over 200 dive sites, most of which can only be reached by a dive liveaboard. There are also multiple shore excursions offered daily for non-divers or those wishing to take a break. On this trip, we're exploring about 20 dive sites. We're doing a couple dives at the same site during the day and the night. During this trip, we're going on a couple must-do Exuma Keys excursions. We jump on the Sea Dog and head to the Exuma Keys Land and Sea Park headquarters on Warderick to hike, believe it or not, the highest mountaintop on the Bahamas. We're told that it's about 100 feet. dock on the island and start walking. The paradisiac scene around the island is unmatchable. The gorgeous weather explodes the beauty of these waters blending into the heavenly green of the local vegetation, making this a living postcard. During the briefing for this trip, the crew mentioned that we could use sandals or dive boots. Well, one thing we want to make sure to pass along to whoever will get a chance to do this hike get anything that has thick soles. Emphasis on thick. You can thank me later. The three mil dive boots don't make your hike a good memory. The mangroves here are protected from rough currents and surges by the walls of the island. These shallow waters serve as a nursery for a lot of marine life. We end our hike trip by jumping in the turquoise calm water of this beautiful beach. After a short swim, we're refreshed and ready to head back to the vessel. Our next excursion is on a special beach, the Iguana Beach on Allen's Key. As we get close to the beach, we notice the lizards mostly on the sand. They seem to be walking towards us instead of running away. These endangered Bahamian rock iguanas seem to sit back and wait to be fed. 
As we pull up, more and more of them keep coming out on the beach to greet us. As we get out of the boat and walk closer, we notice immediately that they're way bigger than we expected. The crew brought a bag of grapes. We each grab some and watch the fun begin. We put a grape on a stick and extend it to them. They come snag it right off the end. The good news is that they don't see us humans as a threat. That's comforting, but it was sad to hear that they were almost extinct due to humans hunting them for consumption. It doesn't hurt to take some selfies with these beautiful creatures. This would be a once in a lifetime opportunity, not because they may go extinct, but because selfies may stop being a thing in the future. After playing a bit, we head back to the vessel while enjoying the scenery. popular excursions of the Exumas. Swimming with the pigs. Yes, these pigs can swim. We arrive at the big major key and here they are, some on the beach and some in the water. No one is completely sure how the pigs came to inhabit big major key, but they likely swam to the island from a shipwreck or were left by sailors who planned to come back and eat them. We bring them some cut apples to make a good impression. Earlier, we were briefed how to behave when they approach us to get their piece of apple. We hang it a bit high to show it to them. If it's shallow, they keep walking, and as soon as they can't walk anymore, they're swimming. These pigs are still, in fact, the only pigs that actually swim. There are many islands that now claim to have swimming pigs, but they are just pigs on a beach that are tricked into walking into the water with food. It's a lot of fun watching them swim in circles going around each person to grab their snack. We take some photos, videos, and selfies with these unique creatures and get ready to head out as the sky starts to get dark. The whole week we've been spoiled. We only get a few storms passing through at night when we were asleep. 
but everyone is following the weather updates for next week. The National Hurricane Center is announcing Fiona to be a strong hurricane. It looks like we've picked the right week to dive. The beaches in the Exuma Keys are known to be some of the most beautiful in the world, with tropical birds pairing and breeding here during the summer seasons. We're lucky to witness such beauty under and above the water. Social areas aboard the AquaCat include the large salon area with an entertainment system and video editing area. Dining aboard AquaCat takes place in the spacious restaurant, where a variety of meals are served with a choice of main entrees. The chef and sous chef do a great job every day on this trip serving delicious meals. A sip of any alcoholic beverage is an indication that you won't be diving next. The al fresco deck with hammocks and barbecue, and the sun deck, the perfect place to catch some rays in between dives or to enjoy a rum punch at the end of the day. This next dive is one of the highlights of the trip. The crew briefing is a bit more thorough for this dive as it presents a certain level of adventure, risk, thrill, and danger. How do we know that? Each one of us is presented a waiver to sign. We are participating in a shark feeding session at the Austin Smith shipwreck site. As we jump in the water and head towards the wreck, a small group of sharks is following us. They seem to know lunch is about to be served. Some of us are anxious. We huddle in a circle just off the deck of the Austin Smith. We keep watching dozens of reef shark patrolling the periphery of the former Bahamian Defense Force Cutter, Austin Smith. A horde of sharks swarms knowingly as the dive master of the AquaCat attaches a bucket-shaped chum sickle to a line descending from the surface. Once the block of fish is in place, a well-organized routine is established. The sharks perform an elegant underwater dance while feeding on the chum sickle. Individual sharks undulate around the bait and grab mouthfuls. They aren't the only ones looking for a piece of the action. Yellowtail snapper hover below the sharks, sneaking a bite whenever they can. Giant Nassau groupers get their share. Smaller black groupers lurk on the edges, waiting for fish crumbs to fall their way. We've visited this site before, and we all noticed an unusually high presence of Caribbean sharks around the boat. We now know why. Throughout the 40-minute banquet, we are entertained by the magnificent feeding ballet. After the show stops, 
divers swim to the bottom of the wreck, collecting some shark teeth, which may have fallen during the feeding frenzy. The groupers then come and swim around the wreck with the divers. In 1980, the HMBS Flamingo patrol boat was looking for illegal fishing vessels. They spotted two foreign fishing boats, overtook them, boarded, and arrested the Cuban fishermen on board. The Flamingo was heading back into port, towing the fishing vessels behind her when she was attacked and sunk by rockets from Cuban fighter jets. The crew abandoned ship, but four of them were lost. The survivor boarded one of the fishing vessels and returned in darkness, navigating by the light of cigarettes. What is this to do with the Austin Smith? Well, the four seamen who lost their lives were Austin Smith, Edward Williams, Fenrick Stirrup, and David Tucker. Eight years after the Flamingo sank, six 95 Cape class cutters were donated to the Royal Bahamas Defense Force by the U.S. Coast Guard. Four of these were renamed after the dead crew members. They were decommissioned in 1996 and scuttled for artificial reefs. Austin Smith was one of the Bahamian Marines who died during the Cuban attack. To honor his memory, the vessel was deliberately sunk in Exuma Keys. After more than 20 years on the sea floor, the structure is still intact. The wreck lies in 60 feet of water with the bow facing the east. The wreck is an impressive structure that we get to explore. However, penetration is only suitable for fully qualified divers. The exterior creates an interesting sight with many holds and hatches of oil drums and cables that we can look into. Austin Smith's memory has been honored by the abundance of marine life that live on and around the wreck. The superb year-round 100 feet visibility allows us to easily spot the residents of this dive site as they swim from far. There are quite a few silverside species around the world. The ones in the Bahamas are Atlantic silversides, also known in the northeast of the United States as spearing. They seem to exist for two purposes, 
One is to be breakfast, lunch, or dinner for larger fish and sea and shorebirds. The other is scientific research because of their sensitivity to environmental changes. They live in large schools mainly for protection. It's hard for a predator to target an individual fish in the general melee and confusion. Silversides also favor seagrass beds, which gives some shelter and protection, and a reasonably safe place to spawn, or, as these are doing, they hang around wrecks or squeeze into rocky spaces in the reef. These groupers live on the ship. The young seem to be sticking around when divers are in the area. They even join the divers under the boat as soon as they enter the water. The old ones seem a bit shy. They remain hidden in their chambers, but they show up during the feeding party. Caribbean reef sharks love swimming close to the bottom of the reef. They move around sandy bottoms, plateaus, and shallow coral patches. With their vigorous movement and streamlined body, Caribbean reef sharks are the picture of beauty and grace. They are among the largest sharks in this part of the world, measuring up to 10 feet. They are still very peaceful and solitary animals. Distinguishing characteristics include dusky colored fins without prominent markings and a short, free rear tip on the second dorsal fin. The snout is rather short, broad, and rounded, without prominent flaps of skin beside the nostrils. Their presence for the shallow waters and their lazy conduct allows many divers, even beginners, to easily encounter them. Unfortunately, this exposes them to risks such as local and commercial fishing as well as shark finning. They are considered a near-threatened species on the World Conservation Union Red List and are vulnerable to extinction as their population is rapidly decreasing. These creatures are valued for their meat, leather, liver oil, and fish meal. Their liver oil is one of the main ingredients in modern cosmetics. Diving with Caribbean reef sharks remains a unique experience. They are great photography and videography subjects and can be approached at close distance, making our dive one to remember. We head back to the boat, rest at about 15 feet for a couple minutes for safety before we exit.
we couldn't miss this next easy, shallow, but special dive. We jump in the water and swim towards the island. We're diving Rocky Dundas. It's an ancient hidden cave in the Exuma Keys Land and Sea Park. When the tide is high, the cave is only accessible by swimming under a partially submerged ledge that leads to this enchanted, large, open cavern. Since we're diving, that makes it easy as we swim inside and surface to witness the fairy cave. The ancient stalactites reach down from the ceiling and stalagmites rise up from the floor to greet them. We spend some time inside to enjoy the view. The entire interior of this cave is covered in rich, colorful algae. Being protected in this national park, the cave remains in its pure, pristine state. We get back underwater to leave. We explore the site, checking out the only big coral in the vicinity of the cave and some local residents before we head back to the boat. During the trip, we dove several sites, walls, mazes, sandy bottoms, and shallow reefs. We're sharing with you some of the best moments from those dives before we go over the mystery blue hole dive and the night dives on this trip. Coral reefs in the Bahamas are home to an incredible diversity of underwater life. Millions of fish, sea slugs, clams, starfish, sea urchins, and turtles, plus many more. One little game the crew introduced on this trip is a mystery fish search, which we needed to spot during each dive. Only one diver was able to spot all the mystery fish selected by the crew. There are so many species around the reefs. Depending on which dive site, what time of day, and the depth, we saw several types of marine life. The coral reefs off Nassau Paradise Island are some of the longest on the planet. Not only that, but they also have some of the clearest and most beautiful waters in the world, making those tropical fish and stunning reefs easy to see. Exuma Keys is also noteworthy for being the first no-take zone in the Caribbean. A no-take zone is exactly what it sounds like. 
an area that's protected from fishing or other types of marine harvesting or development. By creating a core protected area where people are still free to swim, sail, snorkel, dive, and hike, the Bahamas also protect the fish in the waters outside the park. The Exuma Keys Land and Sea Park was established by the Commonwealth of the Bahamas in 1958 under the National Trust Act to protect the native flora and fauna, natural communities, and ecosystems that represent the biodiversity of the park. Exuma Keys Land and Sea Park protects healthy mangrove forests, seagrass meadows, diverse coral reefs, and other undisturbed areas. The park serves as a critical habitat for threatened species such as the hawksbill turtle, Nassau grouper, queen conch, and an array of nesting seabirds. The spectacular drop-off runs parallel to the islands along Exuma Sound on the eastern side. The walls start in about 50 to 60 feet of water and plummet to several thousand. The edge contains huge caverns, tunnels, and large fish of numerous species. 
Each wall offers a unique experience where profile, shape, size, and color vary immensely. The visibility here helps the light rays pierce through the surface to reach the inner walls of the tunnels, making it an exhilarating dive experience. What's striking about these sites is that they're full of magnificent reef formations that tower dozens of feet from the seabed, creating a series of tunnels and canyons inviting us to swim through. Maintaining good buoyancy is a must if you don't want to be called out by divers who follow you. We were glad that this dive group was well trained to not silt out tunnels or hit the corals with their tanks and fins during the swim throughs.
The spectacular aspect of these sights doesn't stop at gliding through these stunning underwater tunnel systems where shimmering streaks of sunlight filter from cracks in the ceiling guide of our way to the exit. As we make it through, the drop-offs offer another spectacular view. The massive coral spires rise from the depths, creating numerous canyons and crevasses. After the last afternoon dive, we have a nice long break. The top deck offers an incomparable resting spot where we watch the sun melt into the horizon while sipping a cup of coffee or cocktail. It's a great place to catch up with other divers, enjoy a snack, or read a book. A truly amazing experience time and time again. For some of us, a night dive is an absolute must, so no cocktails, please. After a nice dinner, we go down to the lower deck and start getting our cameras and dive lights ready. Mm -hmm. 
Night dives are available almost every night on the liveaboard. As we enter the water, we are advised to enter negatively buoyant due to the presence of sea wasps. Fun fact, the sea wasp is a box jellyfish with extremely potent and painful venom that has been known in extreme cases to kill people in as little as three minutes. Yes, it is a fun fact. Knowing that, one would expect to get a waiver to sign before the night dies Sea wasps seem to be attracted to light at the surface. So we go blind, we go fast, and we go negative straight to the bottom. As the reef transitions from daylight to darkness, wondrous creatures that hide during the day come alive to prowl the reef in nocturnal splendor. We will meet several stealthy hunters during this dive, as well as their marine life prey. A special clever predator around these waters is the blackjack or black trevally. This fish is one of the most proficient predators on the reef. At night, it swims along our side to use our torchlight to hunt. As we lit a certain area of the reef, a couple of blackjacks charge a small fish and dive fast under the rocks, searching the lit area for their meal. Bloodworms are a small carnivorous creature that hide in coral and sand during the day. At night, they leave their protective habitat and emerge to feed on small creatures like plankton and tiny shrimp. When night diving in the Exuma Keys, you will quickly get introduced to these annoying, yet interesting nocturnal wiggly little buggers. The bloodworms congregate around our light and around any light-colored skin that reflects the light. The worms are lightning quick and very agile. One cool experiment during the night dive is to feed the corals bloodworms by just shining our light in their direction. The worms think they're swimming up toward the moon, come into our light beam, and are quickly snatched by the coral polyps. The worms pop as they are grabbed by the polyps. We witness a feeding contest between the polyp and a crab. Shining the light on the polyp seems to have resulted in a nice group dinner. Some fish, especially pelagics, hunt at night and rest during the day. But most reef fish are very busy during the day, so they rest at night. They stop moving about and enter a sleep-like state. While they are resting, they are generally sluggish and not very alert. We try our best not to startle them or disturb their rest during our night dives.
During a night dive, we encounter this Caribbean reef octopus as it maneuvers across the reef with grace. We see it swiftly snatching things from under the rocks. It's hunting time for our little blue friend. However painful the consequences of a misstep on these spikes might be, it's hard not to find some beauty in an urchin living in a thriving reef environment like this one. Deeply embedded in the Bahamian history and folklore is the intriguing Queen Conch, one of the region's most fascinating marine creatures. Prized for their beautiful shell and their tasty meat, Queen Conchs are a huge part of Bahamian culture and cuisine. They also produce natural pearls that appear in a variety of lovely hues, including white, orange, and pink with a silky sheen and a wavy pattern. Meet the peanut worm. This fellow burrows under the sand, feeds on sediments, and is a delicacy in Southeast China. One cool encounter at night was this channel-clinging crab. It's also known as a reef spiny spider crab or coral crab. It's a species of spider crab that occurs throughout South Florida and across the Caribbean. It seems that we have interrupted this crab while it was galumphing along, hunting for its dinner. Despite their common name, the coral-banded shrimp aren't technically shrimp, but rather a shrimp-like decapod crustacean. I place my fingers close to this one, hoping that it gets to work, but it seems there are no parasites on my fingers to clean up.
Diverse species of shrimp and crabs of all sizes complement the colorful corals and sleeping fish for a dive not to be missed. We come up blind and fast as well, though sea wasps are not to be ignored when exiting the water either. Thursday before the end of the trip, after the captain's dinner, the crew organizes a photo and video contest. The winners get a prize and a chance to win a trip on the Aquacat. After some entertainment and fun activities, everyone meets on the deck for a cocktail party. As we head back to shore, the captain gives us a tour to his office. On the last day of the trip, the captain takes the vessel close to Nassau. One of the last dives we have planned is the Lost Blue Hole. After the last briefing of the trip, we get our cameras set up and get ready to enter the water for this exciting dive. Blue holes of the Bahamas are unique geological features as they are the only tidal blue holes in the world. These underwater caves are called blue holes because of their coloration when viewed from above. The dark blue deep water in the holes contrasts with the light blue shallow water surrounding them. The hole is surrounded by a grass area and on the north side there are a few coral formations adjacent to the rim. Before we get to the wall, we notice how life here is surprisingly abundant. A couple stingrays rest by the edge. The encounters during this dive were mostly around the rim. Approaching the entrance when the sandy slope seems to keep going deeper. We are at the rim and now we see the dark bottom. 
we see a few divers swimming along the wall of the hole. We slowly glide down and start swimming along the inner wall. The entrance to the blue hole, which is surrounded by powdery white sand banks, is about 35 feet below the surface and is about 100 feet in diameter. When we get down and look up and see the sunlight streaming down through this perfect circle, we realize why it's so special. The wall offers many crevices, cracks, and even a cave that we can penetrate, with a dive light, of course. The blue hole itself reaches depths of 200 feet, but you don't have to dive that deep to experience some amazing natural features. We go back up to look around the rim, hoping to see more marine life. A remora swims by, looking for something or someone to stick to. A diver is a potential body a remora could use to hook up to, but this one seems to prefer finding something else. Angelfish, which usually swim in pairs, have gathered around these few coral formations in a bigger school. Not too far, a nurse shark naps under a rock as divers swim around. A turtle heads down to the hole. Our remora seems to have found its host. They both swim down, but get a bit surprised by the bubbles from the divers swimming below. We are politely escorted out by this little jellyfish, which seems to be in a hurry to get out of the hole. We doubt this has anything to do with the turtle that just arrived here a second ago, but we'll never know. As with any other great story, there is an end to this one too. We had a blast during this trip. So far, this was one of the most exciting diving trips for me and for many of the guests. From the weather to the crew, the food, the cabins, the comfort, the service, the guests, the excursions, the sceneries, and the dive site choices. It was a fabulous treat. No wonder some guests have been coming back for decades to take this trip.
We dry our gear and pack up while the crew cleans up the deck to get the vessel ready for the next trip. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe to this channel so you don't miss the videos I'll post for my next dive trips. Like and drop some comments if you have any questions about the video. Thanks for watching.